What's up guys, this is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and today we are going to learn about this thing called batch updates. In the previous tutorial we learned about prepared statements and the power that they have to make our databases run faster, but you haven't seen anything yet. These batch updates are crazy, so I'm going to explain what batch updates are and then we are going to implement some batch updates into some of our uh, programs. So basically what a batch update is, is it's a way for Java to group together a whole collection of updates that you want to give to the database and it'll group them all together and then it will send them all to the database once. So previously what we used to do is we would write an SQL statement insert books into this table for this person and this person. Then you would send another one. Insert books into this table for this person and this one. And then you would send another one, and then you would send another one. So you would send all these insert statements to the database, and they would all be carried out pretty quickly. But the problem is, when we do that, and we do each insert one at a time, the problem is you're sending something to the database every single time that you want to do something and that's going to group together a lot of traffic you got a lot of back and forth going and it just takes way more time so what Java did was they made this way for you to group together all of those inserts that you would want to send to the database group them all together send it to the database once and then it's all carried out on the database together so as you can see, this is the way we used to do things with what we've learned up till now. And we would write an insert, maybe an update, a create table, whatever we would write, it would be in all of these SQL statements and we would send them one by one. But this is totally not the way to do it. Now what we are going to learn is how to make a batch update. So let's look at this picture. This is a batch update and is exactly what I just explained. You have your program over here and it will group together all of those statements. So as you can see, this arrow is a little bigger because it holds all the statements that you have and it, then it will send them all to the database once. So it will decrease a whole lot of traffic and the speed up compared to executing the updates one by one can be quite big. So what we are going to do right now is we are going to utilize these batch updates. But I do not want to utilize them with the tables and stuff that we used before. I want to create a new table and I want to do this from scratch because it will be a good way for you guys to remember all of those things that we keep doing like getting the driver and all of those things. So I want to do this batch update tutorial from scratch. We're going to use a new table and then this is the last table we're going to use for the rest of our tutorials. So what I want you all to do is I want you to come into wherever you, um, if you have your MAMP or your WAMP or whatever you guys have, and I want you to go into your database. And I want you to go to your YouTube table or whatever you decided to call that database. And I want you guys to go to SQL, and we are going to create a database here within SQL. So follow along with me, and I'm going to explain everything when we're done. So let's type in create table, and let's call it bank account open, close, and go back up. The first thing we're always going to make is our ID. So each bank account that we're going to have is going to have an ID. So we're just going to call it ID. Its data type is int 11. And let's make this the primary key. It's not null and it will auto increment. Perfect give me a comma and an enter. Then the next two um, columns that we're going to make is one called checking balance. And let's make that a decimal comma and then make saving balance decimal. So as you can see, we're going to make a bank account table which will have an ID column, a checking balance column, and a savings balance column. So the program that we're going to write that's going to utilize batch statements, it is going to let somebody be able to withdraw money from their savings account and put money into their checking account. So it's going to do two things, but it's going to do it all in one batch. So instead of sending something to the database that will say, hey, update my checking account, and then send something to the database that will say, hey, update my savings account, instead of doing that, what we're going to to do is in one batch we're going to do all of it together so let's click go and hope that this works and we do not have any problems so when we click structure and we can click bank account 
and we will see ID, checking balance, and saving balance. And the reason I use decimal is because anytime you want to work with money in, um, in an SQL database, it's a good idea to use decimal. You can do some Googling on that and it'll show you all the good advantages of decimal. And maybe there's another one out there that um, maybe might be a little bit better than decimal, but we're going to use decimal for this tutorial. So now what I want you guys to do is we're going to do one more SQL statement and we're going to insert one, um, one user into our database. So let's just type in insert into. If you guys haven't noticed, the reason we are doing this tutorial is for you guys just to get a nice refresher on all this syntax. So we do not want to put anything in the ID column because as you remember in the previous tutorials, that was an auto increment column. So there's no use to populate that column each time. So let's just do checking balance, comma, saving balance. And then let's do $500 into each one. So what we are going to do in our program is we're going to write that batch update that will take $100 out of our savings account and it will put $100 into our checking account. So basically we are going to be making a program that will be able to transfer money from one account to the other account. So it's going to be pretty sweet. Click go. Hopefully we don't have any mistakes and I do have a mistake. Let's see. What did I spell wrong? Insert. Oh, I didn't say the uh, name of the database. Insert into. Might be good if I said that bank account and let's see if I got it now and it looks like we are good so when we come to structure and now we have uh, let's go SQL um, bank account let's see if it worked okay so now we have our first column in there with a 500 checking account and a 500 uh, savings account so now let's start writing our program so let's go into Eclipse and let's create a new class in our same package and let's call it bank account c-o-u-n-t finish alright so we want it in this package so I am going to first I'm going to make my main method because I always seem to forget that so let's do public static void main string args okay and now let's import the first thing that we know we are going to need for, um, we know we are going to make a connection and we are going to make a statement. We're going to need our driver manager and we are going to need that class not found exception from when we connect with the driver. So follow along with me. Hopefully you remember all this stuff, but let's do it anyway. So it's import java.lang.class not found exception. Does that work? That worked. Okay. And then let's do import java.sql.connection. Import java.sql.statement. And the reason we're importing statement is because each one of those inserts that we are going to do is going to be its own individual statement, and then they will all be batched together and sent together. And then let's do the driver manager. So import java.sql.driver manager. And since we are doing all this stuff with SQL, it would be a good idea to already import our SQL exception. Okay, so I might have missed something in there, but we will see as we go along. So the first thing is let's uh, declare our variables. So connection, connection is assigned null. Statement, statement is assigned null. Okay, then let's open up our try block. And now we want to make that connection to the driver. So if you want to pause the tutorial and write that little statement down, if you think that you can remember it, but I'm going to do it right now. So in order to make that connection to the driver, we need to say class dot for name. And then we inside, we are going to say com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver. And now we need to anticipate that exception that we might have if the class is not found. So you need to say catch class not found exception error. And let's print it out. System.out.println error. Oops. Plus error.get 
message. Okay, we should be good now. All right, so I'm going to save this, and now I'm going to run it. If we get this statement printed out, that means I made a mistake. If we get nothing printed out, that means we're good. So let's run it, and I'm going to run it as a job application, and the console did not pop up. That means we had nothing print out. Nothing happened. So that means we are good. We're good to go. So now what I want to do is I want to close our connection and our statement within our finally block. So let's say finally if connection does not equal null connection dot close and then you have to remember we have to do that try catch block around this because anytime we're doing anything that has to do with the database, we have to anticipate a MySQL exception. SQL exception ignore. But even though we catch it, we are just going to ignore it and we're going to put nothing in those braces. And then let's write the one for statement. So paste this in, paste this in. Okay. So now we have gotten basically all the meat and the bones for this problem. We are ready to start doing all of our connections and doing our statements and all those things because we made our connection with the driver and everything. So if we check a look at the console and we run everything, we should have nothing printed out. So we are good to go. So the last thing I want to do in this tutorial is I want to make that connection with the database. So let's say connection is assigned. And then remember, we got to use driver manager here. So it will be driver manager and then what do oh yeah would get connection and then get connection and we remember in these two braces we have root and root or whatever your username and password is and then you have that long string that identifies the URL of your database so mine is jdbc colon mysql colon front slash front slash local host colon 3306 and it's a front slash and I'm pretty sure it was called YouTube. Does anybody know why we have this underlined here without looking it up? If you were able to figure it out the reason is because remember we're doing something that involves the database so we have to anticipate a um, SQL exception so let's catch it so say catch SQL exception error uh, boom boom forgot my R there copy this paste it in here are we good to go we are good to go so two enters and right here in the very next tutorial the second we start we are going to write everything that we need to do to make this batch statement so I know it might seem like you didn't do much in this tutorial but if you remember we learned what a batch statement is we learned the the um, the reasoning behind a batch statement because you know if you're gonna make several statements to a database it makes sense to do a batch statement an example could be something like Facebook you know on Facebook they have all kinds of SQL queries for you to show in the middle all of your wall posts from all your friends and then on the side it might show your notifications and then it might show you know uh, your inbox and all that stuff every single thing that you see is a call to the database so instead of asking them show me the database stuff for this show me the database stuff for this show me the database stuff for this it would make sense if instead they did one batch statement sent all the information to the database at once asked it for all the things they need and then they get all the things back so that is the reason why you would do things like this. So I hope everybody understands the reasoning. In the next tutorial, we're going to jump right in and we're going to start writing our batch statement and we're going to write this whole bank account application. So I hope you guys are excited. I'll see you in the next tutorial and thank you for watching.